Hi guys, this is a quick video to uh, introduce you to the ASA's Modular Policy Framework feature, better known as Service Policy Rules. What is it? Um, it allows you to fine-tune the firewall's behavior and characteristics for various types of traffic flows. Don't see it as an alternative or the same thing as access control lists. Um, access control lists control access, funny enough. Um, module policy framework, it's more to do with set, uh, you know connection parameters, inspection settings, file inspection settings, deep packet inspection, things like that, um, QoS. Why would we use it? Um, to harden our networks against malicious activity, you know, um, to protect inside hosts, to allocate bandwidth using poly um, traffic policing and shaping. Um, the list goes on. Um, in this example, in this video today, I'm going to show you how you can prevent hosts from receiving content that they did not receive um, using HTTP. So when some when a host goes out to a website um, and says, can I have this information? Is that information that comes back to the host the same as what they requested? If it isn't, then we should drop it. We shouldn't allow it. Um, so the way that we do that is with um, inspection engines. Um, the ASA has a number of inspection engines built into it. HTTP, FTP, SMTP are just a few. Um, and we're also going to be limiting how many half form TCP se sessions um, can get to our inside public servers. Okay, so before we configure, I just wanted to explain three things to you, which is the structure of the modular policy framework. The first is a class map or a classification map. This classifies traffic of what we want to match on, of what we want to specify rather. Um, so you can specify an access list, a TCP UDP port number, DSCP values, or you can do any traffic. And there are a few more options which I'll show you in a second. The second thing is policy map. The policy map is where we reference the traffic we've just classified in the class map and what we're going to do with that traffic. So the policy says what we're going to do with that traffic. And then the third thing is the service policy. So where are we going to apply that policy map? those actions are we going to do it on the outside interface are we going to do it globally um, so that's what the service policy says and does for us so how do we configure the MPF or service policy well you're going to go to configuration you're going to go to firewall and then you're going to go to service policy rules and you'll notice that by default the ASA comes preloaded with a global policy this uh, includes a number of inspections turned on by default, as we can see there. Um, you'll notice that ICMP and ICMP error, to, uh, error are turned on. That's not by default. You'll you'll know if you've watched my other video on how to enable ICMP ICMP through the ASA. Um, that's why those are enabled, but they are not enabled by default. The rest of it is. So the ASA is actively inspecting those protocols as they pass through. Um, the ASA it's watching them and it's going to allow control ports to come back through um, you know um, initial uh, not initial additional ports that the application might use um, you know to connect to hosts or servers so our scenario is what we want to do is we want to prevent our hosts from receiving content that they did not request from a HTTP server and we also want to limit how many half form sessions can get to our public servers. Okay, so I'm going to add a service policy rule and we're going to apply it globally. I'm going to call it global class and we're going to match on our inside network source as a source address 10.10.10.24. 10, 10, and the destination will be any, because we're going out to any web server. The service we're using is TCP HTTP. There it is. 
and we're going to go next. Then we're going to check the HTTP box. I'm going to click configure. I'm going to select an HTTP map, and we haven't got one, so we're going to add. Um, you'll notice this, let's call it a bit of name, HTTP map one. You'll notice this slider here. This is an easy way to set some predefined settings um, for the HTTP inspection. Um, have a read through those, but we're going to use some custom details. So what we're going to do is we're going to say we're going to check for protocol violations first of all. So anything that doesn't conform to the standard HTTP protocol, we're going to drop. If the ASA sees some malicious activity, you know, in your HTTP sessions, it's going to drop the connection and it's going to end, we're going to log it. Uh, what's the difference between drop connection and reset? Well, drop connection basically just gets rid of it out of the, the ASA just drops it from its connection table doesn't inform the other end the far end host so it's more like an abrupt ending the reset sends a TCP reset to the far end t telling them that the uh, that the sessions about to be over so it's much more graceful uh, we're just gonna stick with drop connections for now um, and then we're gonna click inspections and we're gonna add an inspection and the the option we want is right there, request response content type mismatch. So when the request and the response content is mismatched, um, there's a discrepancy there. We're going to drop the connection and we're going to log it. And as you can see in here, there's a few more options we can dive down into, but not in this video. Um, I'll leave you to explore those. Um, and then we're going to, oh, one more thing. Match and no, not no match. So the match says match exactly what I say here. So if it and if it doesn't match, then we're not interested. No match says match everything, but what I tell you. So match anything that is not request response content type mismatch. So it's gonna it's gonna match everything else in there except this. But we're gonna go with match because that's what we want to do. Okay, and then we click OK. OK finish and that's one service policy rule added so the next one is we want to limit how many half form TCP sessions can get through to our inside public servers so I'm going to go to add service policy rule and I'm going to select the outside interface and policy notice to be outside policy uh, already exists let's do one so create a new traffic class. We're going to use access control list again. And we're going to say source any. So any source, any any address from the internet going to our servers. So I've already set up an object there. And the service is TCP HTTP. And we're going to click next. And then we're going to go to connection settings. And we're going to say, so here's where we set how, the maximum connections that we can have either full TCP and UDP connections or embryonic. So embryonic is um, what, what I was referring to when I was saying half formed. So what is a half formed session? Um, well, let's say, for instance, there's a host on the internet and he wants to perform a denial of service on you. How is he going to do that? Well, he's going to send you a lot of information in a short period of time. Basically, what he's going to do is he's going to send a TCP, a TCP SYN to your server. And the server will reply with a SYNAC um, back to the host. But the host never replies with an ACK itself saying that, yep, I've acknowledged that you've acknowledged my connection. So the, the server just sits there with a half form session waiting to hear back from this host. So, if you get a, quite a lot of them in a short period of time, that can use up a lot of resources um, on your server, which we don't want. We don't want a denial of service. So, what we can do here is we can set globally how many maximum, uh, the maximum amount of TCP UDP connections on the ASA globally. So, how many in total for every host and every server. Same goes for maximum embryonic connections. How many in total can we have? And then we've got the per client, so per host connections. What can we do there? Um, well, they're also set to default zero by default, which means unlimited. 
Uh, we're interested in maximum per client embryonic connections because we're after the host uh, half formed ones. So we're going to set that to 50. Why 50? 50 is just a number. I've done no research. You, well, when you do this, when you do this in a production environment, you'll need to research into how many um, half formed sessions you should realistically in the real world in an ideal environment be expecting to receive because some applications actually use embryonic connections um, so you need to be careful and you need to be aware of that when doing this and then we would like to set our embryonic connection timeouts oh before I move on actually so what's the result of that so result of this setting so the the server in question or the servers are going to be allowed to have are going to be allowed to have 50 TCP half form sessions um, waiting to hear back from you know the far end host um, on number 51 the ASA is going to step in and say right no more we're going to put them we're going to we're going to take over we're going to act as a proxy to the server now it's sort of a proxy it's not really um, it's like a it's like a that's the best way I can put this it's like a dormant proxy so the ASA is going to sit there and if the host decides that it's going to keep sending and sending and sending TCP half form sessions, you know, t keep sending SYN packets without, you know, acknowledging the SYNAC packet sent back to it, the ASA is going to take over and it's going to store those t the, the future TCP SYNs in TCP SYN cookies. Um, and why does that help? Well, it, it helps because it's taken away, when, when a ho if a host was allowed to keep doing that to your server, it's going to take away precious resources um, that you want legitimate host to use. So the ASA is going to take over and it's going to store those SYN packets as TCP SYN cookies and the TCP SYN cookies are not used for very very little t um, resources at all you know you can get into hundreds of thousands of TCP SYN cookies and it wouldn't even make a dent. So and then it's going to keep listening so if that host, if the host is a legit, legitimate host and it just took a while to send the SYNAC back the ASA will acknowledge that, that it sent a uh, TCP um, ACK back to the SYNAC packet that the, our server sent. And it will flush out that TCP SYN cookie it made and it will forward on the ACK onto our server, establishing the TCP session. Um, so next, embryonic connection timeout. So this is the global timeout for, the em for embryonic connections. Um, and we want to change that to say let's just say for example one minute so we want to we want our serve we want we want our servers or the ASA to stay to stay listening for uh, an act packet back to the synac packet for one minute and if it doesn't then it's going to close the connection so we're going to finish oh what have we done wrong there? Valid range, hour, hour. Okay, so we need. Oh, valid range. Oh, it's five. So, oh, so the minimum we can have is five. There you go. You learn something every day. So we're going to apply that, and it's a good idea to always review the code. Um, pause the video and have a look through that. To see if you you can make sense of it. Uh, let me quickly run through it for you. So there's our access list that we defined our traffic with. And then we're going to reference those access lists in the class map, so the classification criteria. And then in the policy map global policy, we're going to reference those class maps. Um, for our inspect, we're going to reference a policy map type inspect. So that HTTP map one that we created, where we said protocol violation should be dropped and mismatch content should be dropped. That's going to be referenced here. And then the policy map outside policy one, so it's created a new policy on the in outside interface. There's our classification criteria outside class one, uh, which is here. So it's referencing that, so it's going to match that access list, which is there. And then we're going to apply the actions in the policy map. As I said before, the policy map is for applying actions, and we're going to set the connection. Per client, embryonic max 50, as we did, and then we're going to set the client the timeout to five minutes. And then finally, we're going to apply the outside service policy to the outside interface. And that's really it. Um, I, felt, I hope you found the video informative. If you've got any comments or feedback, please leave them below and like the, and like the video. 
Okay, thanks for watching, guys.